just keep coming for the struggling New York Knicks. On Tuesday, ex-Chicago Bull Dennis Rodman weighed in on the team's poor play, questioning whether Carmelo Anthony was the right fit for the team, and he wonders if the first-year coach, Derek Fisher, is the right candidate for the job. Here's his quote. Uh, they're not running the triangle. Derek Fisher's not really coaching. I know Phil is trying to throw his input in the background, but who expected this from Phil? They expected him. We're going to give him $15 million a year for the next six years, and the team is now, wow, they might not even make the playoffs. I learned that in probably 15 minutes, referring to the triangle. When I was in Chicago, it's not that difficult. It's a triangle. Rodman continued by going on a rant about Carmelo Anthony. How are you going to play with a superstar like Carmelo Anthony when he wants to shoot the ball all the time and everybody else has to play their role? Bill Jackson did that with Michael Jordan at the beginning, and guess what happened? He put a team around Michael Jordan, and everybody fit right in. Everybody knew the boss was, that was him, Michael Jordan, who is the man here in New York besides Carmelo. Nobody wants to play together with Carmelo, it seems like. Again, that's just his humble opinion. The Knicks are 4-18 and entering Tuesday's game against New Orleans. Uh, that's the worst record through 22 games in the franchise's 69-year history. So we ask our fan, as well as our expert, Stephen A. Smith, does Rodman have a point? It saddens me to say he absolutely does. <laughs> um, obviously, outside of the world of basketball, don't ask me anything about at Dennis Rodman um, in terms of the things that comes out of his mouth if you want me to speak nicely. Okay. Uh, but when it comes to the sport of basketball, he is brilliant. He is a champion five times over. Uh, he was a rebounding demon. The effort that he put forth, you want to see the way that basketball should be played from an effort standpoint. Watch Dennis Rodman play for the Detroit Pistons when the bad boys were winning titles. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody give more effort in their playing career than I saw him when he was a member of the bad boys. And obviously Chicago to a lesser degree as well. Um, the man knows basketball, and I can't sit there and take it seriously when he says they should know it because he should know it because Dennis Rodman on the basketball court – comprehended things incredibly mm -hmm. easier than most people could. Most people aren't as, as, as intellectual as he is as a basketball guy. On a, Their basketball IQ wasn't nearly as high as Rodman's. But I'm going to respect what he says he's noticing. The jury is still out on Derek Fisher, Skip Bayless. Um, I think it's unfair for folks to say that he can't coach or anything because it's still too early and all he's doing is trying to implement the triangle system the way he was hired to do because that's what Phil Jackson wants him to do. It's just that simple. We'll see as time goes on how much cachet he builds. I spoke to a couple of sources on the team. They tell me that the problem is not Derek Fisher and his inability to teach the triangle or his lack of knowledge about the triangle. It's that some guys on the team can't comprehend the triangle, which goes to what Dennis Rodman was saying. We get to the selfishness of Carmelo Anthony. I'm going to be an anomaly here. I'm tired of hearing that nonsense. Carmelo Anthony ain't playing with much. I'm sorry. Sometimes you look selfish if you go out on the court and you pass the ball. I watched that whole game when they lost to Charlotte on Friday night. I watched the Knicks blow that game, giving up a layup, a layup to, to Kimba Walker to close out the game, okay, after coming back from a 21-point deficit. I believe that was Carmelo Anthony who brought them back, even though Tim Hardaway hit some three big three-point shots himself. You have guys on the New York Knicks. And I don't know if this has been said. Individually, they can play. You take them out in the park, they'll, they'll kick your butt. But when you have to play in a structured environment where you are asked to run plays and, and display an IQ on the basketball court, there are quite a few of these, boy, of these boys that are sorely lacking. And Carmelo Anthony knows he's the man for the triangle. He knows he's the man that Phil Jackson wants to be the man. But he's sitting there and he's got to play with guys that, to be quite honest with you, couldn't play when they had a system they could understand with Mike Woodson. So what you going to do now with a system that you have in difficulty comprehending with the triangle and Derek Fisher? In the end, however this all comes down to Phil Jackson, because asking a young coach with no resume 
to teach this to a guys yep. that have been in the league is difficult. And getting rid of Tyson Chandler, averaging nearly 11 points and 12 rebounds, Doesn't he was completely good. underestimated. Yeah. Tyson Chandler was completely unappreciated. And Phil Jackson letting him go, treating it as if he could just go out and get anybody to replace Tyson Chandler was a huge, huge mistake. And it is costing the New York Knicks daily. But there are those last year who suspected he was giving less than his best, Tyson Chandler. Well, they felt like Tyson Chandler was, but in actuality, Skip, I said it right here, Tyson Chandler never cheated them with effort. It's just that he was frustrated yeah. with Mike Woodson. He was frustrated with the team, and he spoke out against it, yeah. and they interpreted his verbal frustration as an excuse to question his effort, yeah. and that was wrong because he didn't shortchange you with effort. I covered Dennis Rodman in Chicago. He didn't always behave wisely, but he always spoke wisely. When he opened his mouth, I listened to what he said. It wasn't always eloquently stated, right. but it was wise. He does have high basketball IQ, and I laughed when he said, I learned the triangle in probably 15 minutes. I believe him. And I believe him, too. Now I'm reading Chris Broussard's source material here, oh, okay. which we haven't, we haven't you, yeah. you didn't bring it up. I didn't bring yeah. it up. I mean, I alluded to it, but okay. go ahead. So, so now I'm reading that Carmelo and Tim Hard Hardaway Jr. are at each other's throats and have almost come to blows, and, and they, they both want the basketball, and Carmelo doesn't like the fact that Tim has yelled at him during games, get the rebound, and they've gone back and forth. I mean, th this is an ugly situation. This team is 4-19 and 19 with the, you, you alluded to the talent. There's, there's more than 4-19 and 19 talent on this team. Now, is, is Carmelo struggling with his knee? It sounds like he is struggling. I don't know how bad it is if it hampers him, but they have now lost nine in a row, and, and everything's falling over the nine games for Carmelo. He's, he's gone from 48% shooting down to 40%. And by the way, it's falling with Amari Stoudemire looking pretty good. Pretty good. Last night he looked pretty good. He, he kept him in the game for a while last night. So, you know, I, I'm back to Phil Jackson. When, when they got Phil, I thought, okay, here they go. Here they come back. Stephen A., I said it from the start. Phil has to coach this basketball team. That's right. Again, was. okay, but can, can he survive the, the cross country trips on the plane? Will his hip or you know his legs bear, hold up on the road? Well, they're just going to have to. He's making too much money. What's he What's he making now? Like twelve million, million a year? Uh, yeah. The Knicks are trying to say it's ten. Others are saying it's twelve million. Well, Robin but said I, it was fifteen. I, real, real, <laughs> well, that's not he he that's not it up. But here's okay. the quick point that I'd like to make. Yeah. Phil Jackson should have coached this team at least the first year. Yes. Sure. Segue in yes. the way for yeah. Derek Fisher sure. to come in. And number two, you know, listen, I don't know. I haven't called anybody this morning about this Carmelo report. I do know that Carmelo has a tendency to be ready to fight. That much I will tell you. Uh, he, he will... <laughs> Uh, if he gets ticked Put off, the pause on you. He will step to you. <laughs> you know, he, he will not hesitate. Just me. He I, will I don't not think hesitate. Tim Hardaway would have a great shot against. He, he would not. Oh, I mean, Tim and not, Tim Hardaway. It wasn't like Tim Hardaway was trying to fight him. Tim Hardaway would just yell, grab oh, yeah, the rebound, grab the rebound. And, and, and and according to Chris Broussard's report, Melo yelled, you know, you better not ever, mm, you know, yeah. talk to me. Yeah. And that's that is Melo. Yeah. I will say that. And he is the type of person mm -hmm. that'll be like, wait till we get in the locker room, or wait till we get pause. Out. Mello is not, I mean, Mello is not, I mean, most of these guys are not punks, but Mello is the kid. Mello went to the, the bus last year. With, with okay. JJ. Okay. Yeah. No, he, he was like, I'll wait for you right here. Uh, Mello's the kind of person. <laughs> Mello's, Mello's the kind of person. He reminds me of Derek Coleman in that regard. I, I'm going to see okay. you. I want to get fined. I'm going to deal gotta, with you later. We got to get out of here. He is that kind of guy. We add Mello this. will beat Phil you Phil Jackson later. says that uh, he sees a loser's mentality on the team. Perhaps Phil needs uh. to come from a high and coach, as the gentlemen have said. Uh,